It's Mornings with Jesus. I want to uplift our Lord today. I'd like to read to you from Scripture, Isaiah 40, uh, verses 1, and then verses 9 through 11. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor hath taught him. Who can teach God? He is teaching us. What is he saying to us? I've given my son for you is what he's saying. My son wants to be a shepherd to you and lead you and guide you. Tell the people of him who is the chiefest among 10,000, the one altogether lovely, from the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10 and 16. Words alone cannot tell this. It will reflect in our character when we understand how much God loves us and how much Christ gave to win us to him. Everyone God has predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, Romans 8, verse 29. In everyone Christ's long-suffering love, his holiness, meekness, mercy, and truth are to be manifested to the world this is what I am here for. I am here to present his love to you. To let you know that you have hope. You have someone who cares. You have someone who loves you. You have someone who wants to lead you to happiness. Because in the midst of everything happening to us, we can have joy. As it reads, in Nehemiah 8, verse 10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Them say to be going around all mournful. Doesn't It doesn't tell us not to warn of the coming judgments. We are to do that. But we are to do everything in love and let people know there's hope and there's a way. In Christ is the tenderness of the shepherd the affection of the parent and the matchless grace of the compassionate Savior. His blessings he presents in the most alluring terms. He, he wants to allure us. He, wants, he loves us. His blessings he presents in the most alluring terms. He is not content merely to announce these blessings. He presents them in the most attractive way to excite a desire to possess them. Oh, don't you want the blessings of Christ? I want the blessings of Christ. He gives us blessings daily when we appreciate the, the sunshine and, and the fact that we woke up this morning and that we have something to eat and drink or whatever our blessing can be, even without something to eat and drink. We can praise God because we can breathe. There's always something that's a blessing from him 
and he's promised to supply our needs. All we have to do is ask. So his servants are to present the riches of the glory of the unspeakable God. The wonderful love of Christ will melt and subdue hearts. You're not going to beat somebody over the head worrying about sin and, and what's going to happen to them and get them to want to obey God and to get them to where they accept Christ as their Savior. That's, that's not going to work. That's a counterfeit way. The wonderful love of Christ will melt and subdue hearts. Now it's true, people need to know what's coming. I agree. But they also need to know the reason why they don't want to be a part of that. Not out of fear, but out of love. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. O Zion that bringeth good tidings. Zion, O Zion, the church, his church that bringeth good tidings. Get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength, it says. I'm lifting up my voice, and I'm telling y'all, God loves you. God understands your sorrows and your heartaches, and he didn't bring it on this world. He's not the one that brought sin to this world. Satan accused him of being a dictator, so he couldn't just stop it either. He had to let it play out. But in the midst of it, what did he do? He gave. He sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know... He wants you to go home with him. He longs to stop all this suffering. And when the whole thing is played out, which isn't going to be long now, he's going to come. He's going to take those that would be happy in heaven back home with him. He gives hope to those who believe in him. In John 14, he tells us, verses 1 through 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. These are the Savior's words. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. You know, he also tells us that we can have peace if we abide in him and trust him, he says, peace, in verse 27 of the same chapter, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Everything in this world now tries to trouble us. Things are happening in rapid succession. Sin is getting, just it's taking over all over. But you are protected by angels and the Lord God has his hands on you and looking at you. And Christ knows everything that's happening to you. 
You can have peace no matter what's happening in your life right now through the Holy Spirit. Just accept Christ into your heart and ask him to take over your life. That's all it is. You say, oh, I, I'm, I've done too much. I, I, the Lord wouldn't want me. Uh, people say, well, the the church would burn down if, if I walk into it and other things. No matter how or how bad your sins are, it tells us, and I repeat this over and over again in my in my uh, program so that people understand if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness what does that mean at that moment we are righteous covered with his righteousness and at that moment God can look at us and see Christ's righteousness Because if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. All men sin. So we go to Christ and confess our sins and ask forgiveness, and he does it. He forgives us. Now, I'm not saying you can think, well, now, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to steal that, and then I'll ask Christ to forgive me, and that'll I'll be okay. That's presumption. What you need to have peace in this world, you need Christ. See, the world, it says in John 2, verse 17, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I, I didn't live a good life. You can't probably tell by looking at me, but... I've been, I've been in some of the worst settings that a person could be in. But you know what? When I gave my heart 100% to the Lord, when I figured that I was too bad for him to accept because of things I had done, I only dared say, God help me. And I barely could look up to heaven. And I didn't figure he would. I just thought, well, you know, I've, I've just been too bad. It's just too late for me. <laughs> Boy, did he show me different. I didn't have to do a thing. He moved mountains. He got me out of where I was. And he took me to beautiful people. In Ethan Temple, Seventh-day Adventist Church, near Dayton, Ohio. Wonderful, wonderful brothers and sisters that taught me how much God loved me. And through that, I gained strength from Him. I studied His Word, and I read and learned and learned how to pray. Learned how to take these promises in this word and say, God, you said this. You're not a God that you should lie, so you'll do it. And he did. Whosoever keepeth his word, it says in John 2 verse 5, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as his, he walked. So there's a change that takes place when you realize God loves you. And you want him to continue to be in your life. And for Jesus to come into your heart. And we fail. 
because we're human. But that doesn't stop us from trying. It doesn't stop us from the Savior leading us to ways that we can do better. He is a personal, compassionate, loving Savior who will show us the way to eternal life. I just had to make a, a little program this morning for y'all just to give you hope and, and to tell you there's peace and joy and love in the midst of all of it. It says so in God's word. Read his word. Read about the, the miracles Jesus did and how he healed. He's still the same Jesus today. He said, I do only those things that he has me do, meaning his father. Father God wants you healed of your maladies. Father God wants you to have peace and, and joy and love. And when he allows things, we must trust him that he is allowing them for the, for the better, for the good. As you all know, I've said it before, I've lost all three of my sons. My husband's passed away. I don't know why I'm alone in this world. But you know what? I'm not. Because every moment of every day, Jesus Christ is with me. Every moment of every day, I'm surrounded by angels. If I'm in danger, they protect me. And God supplies my needs. And I praise his name for it. But I'm nobody special. I came from the, ended up in the slums and I came from there. But I have grown up in Christ. He accepts you exactly like you are. And as I just read, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness right then, right where we are. It doesn't matter how other people see us. It doesn't matter what other people think of us. What matters is that you're right with Jesus Christ. That's what matters. Because he gave his life on Calvary to save you. And he didn't do it just to leave you down here in the world to figure out your own way. No, he gave us a guidebook. He gave us the Holy Bible. I stand on this word. Precious truth, precious promises we can claim in prayer and say, God, you said this. Thank you that you are doing it. And praise his name for it, and he will. When trials and troubles come and things upset us, the Lord can give us joy in it. My son, that, that last one that passed away, it was, it was hard. But you know, about three days after he passed away, I remembered to praise him in all things. It wasn't easy at first, but I started praising the Lord. And I had the most beautiful experience with the Father God and with Jesus than I've ever had in my life. I'm telling you, there's power in prayer. There's power that you will receive when you read God's Word. And I want you to know that all heaven is interested in your welfare. I hope all of you just have a blessed day. And decide to walk with Jesus if you're not. And reach out and know that he's there. That he receives you when you come to him in humility and say, Lord, I've sinned. Confess your sins and he covers you with his cloak of righteousness. Hallelujah. Y'all have a blessed day. Much love in Jesus' name.